Perhaps you're an industrial designer like myself, and you landed yourself a nice, big, fat, soft goods project. Well, congratulations on that. Or perhaps you're a student, and you have a design studio project where you have to do some sewing, and you need some basic information about how to sew stuff together for your soft goods project. Well, you're in luck. This video is all about sewing and stitching basics for industrial designers and manufacturing. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred Backpack Hanger in stainless steel and aluminum designed by me holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, holds your keys, super versatile. So I'm packing up some here that were recently sold. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. PCB Way offers a multitude of prototyping services Sheet metal fabrication, they can fold your 3D CAD into durable sheet metal parts. They offer 3D printing services in a multitude of materials and printing varieties. Additionally, they offer injection molding and custom molded prototypes for production parts. Lastly, they also offer CNC services for custom metal and plastic parts. Check them out for your next prototype project. Link in the description below. In the world of consumer product design, I think one of the nice things about bonding different materials together is that there's such a great range of diversity. I mean, you might be sewing some canvas onto a piece of plastic. You could even end up sewing like a piece of leather to a piece of nylon webbing. Or let's say like a stretchy piece of medical grade rubber to a pair of denim or a piece of recycled car tire the options are limitless now the vast majority of consumer soft good products like these rock rooster sneakers right here are going to be straight stitches and these are really nice by the way i'm going to leave a referral link in the description below where you can purchase uh, rock rooster footwear at a 12 percent discount with my coupon code all right if you take a look at this soft good this backpack here from think tank all the stitches are straight stitches but what's interesting about this product is none of the edges of the materials are exposed they're always hemmed or covered in some sort of way to increase the look of this product whereas on the rock rooster footwear that are made out of leather the edges are actually exposed because the leather doesn't fray and it's a different type of material. So depending upon the material is going to sort of determine what kind of a stitch or a finish you're going to do on the edge of the material or even how you're going to bond it together. On a straight stitch machine like mine, the only things that you can change are the type of thread you put in, the color of the thread, and the stitch length and in this video i'm using bonded nylon for every single example it's super durable and just a fantastic thread this is a one millimeter stitch length it's very fine and probably would tear out very quickly this is a two and a half millimeter stitch length you can see the stitch and it's probably a much more realistic stitch length for this type of material This is a four and a half millimeter stitch length, probably an average stitch length for consumer soft good products. Okay, here I just sewed a six millimeter stitch length and you see how it sucks the thread in from the top into the bottom. This happens on my machine sometimes and I don't know why. If you know why this happens and how to fix it, please leave a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. And here you can compare a production stitch length from the Rock Rooster footwear to the stitch lengths that I just cranked out. The distance 
from the seam to the edge of the material is called seam allowance. And in this case, there's a five millimeter seam allowance on there. And if we take a look at this Rock Rooster footwear, the shoe here, where it's about two millimeters on these two uh, panels that are stitched together. And if you take a look at the one on top of it here, this is about three millimeters. So the seam allowance here on the bag on this example is about two millimeters and the seam allowance here is about eight or nine millimeters. So that's really gonna vary depending upon what the designer specs out. Now the problem with a simple seam stitch is that it can come undone on the end and you wanna do what I call a back stitch, but it's actually called a lock stitch. We're gonna sew two or three forward two or three back, and then forward again. And then when you get to the end, it's kind of double stitched here from going forward, back, and then forward. And this makes it so the thread cannot come out. Where this one, you can see how this comes apart. All right, that's the first one without a lock stitch, but this other one is not coming apart. Many materials are subject to fraying. I just cut this piece of denim and then just rubbing it lightly causes the edges to fray. And you don't want this. We want to hide this and make it so it's not visible and so it doesn't get frayed and look terrible after a while. So a simple solution to this is to fold the material under itself and then to sew along the top of that so that you can't see that frayed material. This is a simple hem here, a lock stitch at the top and then a lock stitch at the bottom. And then this makes it nice so that you can't see that edge. All right, so a rolled hem will make it so that nowhere is the frayed edge visible. We'll fold it in half and then fold it in half again and then roll that and we'll stitch through that so you don't see any of the edges of the material. Lock stitch at the top, lock stitch at the bottom, locks it all in. This is a messenger bag shoulder pad and they put a different type of material on the edge here. This is called a bound edge and so they're trying to hide the materials by putting another piece of material over that. I've got a little piece of ribbon here and I'm gonna to try to do a bound edge on this piece of denim. I take the ribbon, I fold it in half, and then we're gonna tuck the denim inside of it and we're gonna sew our stitch along there to hide that edge. So this is what a bound edge looks like and you can actually see the bottom with thread pull through here because the thread tension isn't correct because the material is so thin but the ribbon doesn't fray and then it hides the frayed material underneath of it so like the messenger bag pad i showed you you may come into a situation where you have multiple pieces of material all coming together and you're going to bind all of those together with your binding material so lock stitch at the top just like we always do and we're going to bind these two pieces together with a simple straight stitch and a lock stitch at the end and then this is what you get here in the end and it hides the two dissimilar material edges if you don't want to use a binding like we did in the previous example but you want to bind these two materials together you can do this top stitch hem where you can bind the two materials together and hide their edges. Put the two good surfaces together and do a very small seam allowance along the edge of the two materials to bind them together. Then you're gonna take and you're gonna flip them over and you're gonna do a straight stitch to hide those two edges on the inside along with that initial straight stitch where we put the two materials together. And this will give you some decent strength. So if you want this kind of a look, then you would call out the seam allowance and the stitch type in your tech pack to get this and hide the edges of the material. 
You may run into a situation where you're putting two panels together and the material that you're working with doesn't come in a wide enough piece to cover your thing. And so you need to do an overlapping seam. And so the most basic of this is the overlap stitch here. And I'm gonna basically run two straight stitches down this thing to give us an overlapping seam. This is what you get with an overlapping seam, but it of course leaves the edges of the material exposed, which you probably don't want in a consumer product. You may get into a situation where you just need to hide one of the seams. Let's say there's some backing or some padding on the inside of a bag or something like that. And so all you have to do is hide one of the seams. And this is where you do a semi flat filled seam. You put the two faces together, you fold it over, and then we're gonna run a straight stitch down the top of this thing so that we hide just the top uh, material edge. We'll do a tight seam allowance with the two materials facing each other. Then we'll just flip the top one over and we'll run a seam, straight seam down that one to lock that in. And you might see this, like I said, like on a bag or something like that. If you want to hide the seam of both materials and you don't want to see either of the edges, you want a full flat felled seamed. And you do this by putting the two good faces together, flipping over that bottom one, and then folding the top over again here. And this is what you get, let's say on the inside of a pair of jeans. And it's super strong. You're getting almost 100% of the material strength and it's very durable. And that's why they do it on the inside of jeans. So you don't know, split out the seam on the inside of your pants and they last a long time. This is what makes blue jeans so fantastic, of course. Now I'm gonna do two straight top stitches, both with lock stitches and this gives you this full flat felt seam, nice and strong, very durable. I come a little close to the edge there and I'll do this every day, but you get great strength and durability and that's what you want sometimes in a product that you're putting together so that it's durable and long lasting. Oftentimes in soft good products, you need to attach some webbing, either for a strap or a handle to whatever you're making. And I'm gonna show you three different box stitches. The first one here, we just fold the webbing over for a simple hem, and I'm gonna fold it over again for a third time just to cover that edge. And we'll take a look at how to sew this box. We're gonna raise the presser foot and we're gonna rotate this thing 90 degrees. The presser foot, rotate 90 degrees. Rotate 90 degrees again. Lock stitch that last leg of the box. So if you don't need a ton of strength and you just need a little bit of durability to attach a piece of webbing onto some material, then this simple box stitch is gonna be good enough for your project. If you need some more strength, then you wanna do what's called a box X stitch. Box stitch that. And we're gonna go all the way across. I'm gonna raise the presser foot. Now we're gonna come at a diagonal across. You leave the needle down and you rotate it. We're gonna come back up that far side. Rotate this thing. We go to the other corner. back all the way back into the corner and now we're going to come up the last side a lock stitch and there you have it a basic 
box X stitch. And this will give you some pretty decent strength. I'm gonna show you one more type that'll give you even more strength. I'm gonna rotate this 90, two stitches, not too far. I'm gonna rotate. We can't cross too far. Hopefully not. All right, come back up here. Diagonal. Now we come down here. We go a little bit past. I'm gonna rotate. This bottom row. Lock it in at the bottom there. Back to where we started. Lock it. So this is the extra strength box X stitch. And I'm going to be totally honest here. This is a pretty brutal extra strength box X stitch. Probably the most gruesome one you'll ever see. I certainly don't make these every day, but this is how you do that. So these basic stitches that we just went through for hiding seams and connecting panels, it's probably going to cover 90% of everything you're going to do if you're going to do a soft goods material yeah there's going to be some exceptions and some things that i missed or some specialty stuff but for the most part the stuff i showed you here is going to cover most everything you're going to encounter so whether you're sewing up some prototypes or you're just putting together a tech pack this should cover most everything that you're going to encounter and make it seem like you at least know what it is that you're doing if you want to get yourself a pair of these Rock Rooster footwear, I'm wearing the four inch uh, sneaker type. They make a lot of work boots that are heavy duty, with some with steel toes, and some are six inches that lace up higher. But that's just not what I wear. It's not my style. Um, but they have tons of options. And I'll leave a link below so that you can get the 12% discount with my coupon code. They're super comfy. I highly recommend them. You want to stay tuned and watch me score this goal against the Red Wings alumni. This was a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago. So I was a little bit younger and I scored a pretty cool goal. Um, flip the puck over the net, pass it to one of my teammates who shoots on goal. Then I get the rebound and score. It's a pretty unusual type of goal, uh, but pretty cool. I want to check it out. Enjoy. Comes Rohan out with it. That's number two on one. Eric Strebel. Strebel. Bowman makes the stop. <laughs> it flipped out. Flipped it over back of the net. And a shot put in. And that's Eric Strebel puts it in. John Lichtenberg took the first shot. Rebound by Strebel. Strebel puts it in. Strebel from, from Lichtenberg will get the call from Matt Pavlis. That's what it. That's what I thought. Yeah, let's take a look at it, Hugh. He flips it over from behind There's the net. Lichtenberg. Comes over there past the toe of Bowman. Strebel right there puts it home for a one nothing lead for the Roja alumni. Strebel from Lichtenberg. So I think it was Strebel that started the play behind the net. 